thousands of centuries, men have trembled before the limitless power of nature, and few have dared to challenge her bitterest rigors. But in the winters of 1944 and 5, a great wartime experiment took place in Canada. Thousands of men and vehicles set out to invade an area so tough and inaccessible that few would attempt it even in summer. Yet these men were going to tackle it in midwinter at 50 below zero in shifting snows. They had with them the greatest assortment of equipment ever assembled for travel in ice and snow. Amongst it, a strange new snowmobile of Canadian design. But between the truck columns and the proving grounds lay miles of trackless forest. Without the bulldozer, the scheme could never have started. No other vehicle can punch its own roadway through so dense a wilderness. Without it, basic supply lines could never have been established. Snow plows could never have burst in to transform remote lakes into a supporting train of airstrips. But the new Canadian snowmobile was capturing the attention of observers. It too could pack down airstrips without the need of plowing. And it could go anywhere a dog team could go in a fifth of the time. <laughs> Extensive trials with vehicles of other designs showed that their performance was more limited. Old type ski fittings would catch in drifts or undergrowth. Some models were too light or their treads too narrow to withstand the heavy going. The new snowmobile, observers said, would have a brilliant peacetime future. Its yard-wide rubber treads could speed it alike through snow or bog, marsh or mud. And with a range of 100 miles a day, it would help farmers, doctors and forest rangers in frontier communities. But there are grades too steep and trails too narrow for any mechanical vehicle. Here, pack horses were introduced in an effort to lengthen supply lines. But even the willing horses became useless in more than three feet of snow. And so, as the men trudged wearily into camp, they realized that more and more depended on their own ingenuity, teamwork, and endurance that they, and they alone, could crack the last barriers of nature's ice-bound fortress. With proper training, a man can feel at home in 25 feet of snow. He can clothe, feed, and house himself with only a 50-pound pack. And he knows that the real secret of keeping warm is, in fact, to keep cool. That's not a snood. It's a special string vest that ventilates and insulates the body. Over this go light layers of wind and waterproof clothing. For an extreme cold, wearing too much can be more dangerous than wearing too little. But there was more to learn than merely to keep alive and warm. Novices were instructed in the mysteries of skiing. They had to keep themselves and their equipment dry. They were taught the art of camouflage and the bear crawl. For so long as Japan was still at war, every tactic must be perfected against her. the grocer boy with tomorrow's rations. In sub-zero action, a man needs huge quantities of meat and fats and sugar. Throughout the exercises, tons of supplies were dropped among the treacherous peaks, sometimes without parachutes.
climax of the training came when an entire squadron set out to tame the Columbia ice fields. This was to be the test of all they had ever learned in morale and discipline. Like tiny ants, they crawl slowly up the 10 million year old glaciers, saving their strength for the tougher grind above. An injured climber receives instant attention. Strapped firmly in his own sleeping bag, he is secure from cold. His ski outfit makes an emergency sled to start him back to safety. One time, a major injury meant certain death by freezing. But now, radio sets in motion a first aid chain, and a casualty can be brought speedily out of danger by toboggan, horse, and plane. Meanwhile, the rest of the squadron have reached the limit of the snows and changed their skis to spike-studded crampons. Armed with ice axes, they beat their way up the sheer ice walls through treacherous crevasses, straight for the wind-swept peaks. men from farms and towns and cities, men who respect nature but fear her no more, for in comradeship together they had seen the strength of man prevail against the strength of mountains. <laughs> 